The first horses came to America in 1493 on Columbus's second voyage to the Americas. They were originally used for plows and transportation. Horses didn't have a big role in the sports industry until the first Kentucky Derby was held in 1875. After their rise in population, they were used in sports like hunter-jumper, endurance, and track racing. Is when did you first start horseback riding? I didn't get to get my own horses until I was like 38, and my first horse was an Arabian named Kai, and I, that's when I really got interested. So, what are all of the styles that you have ridden in? I ride an English saddle, so I ride English. I've done hunter jumper, I've done dressage, and what I finally ended up doing was endurance racing, which is racing horses through uh, natural parks and recreational areas and farmland. It's an organized race, and they can be anywhere from 25, 50 to 100 miles. So how would you think riding in these styles are different from each other? Like how do you have to communicate with the horse differently in order to do all the things that you've done? Hunter jumpers, you have to pay attention to how you come to the jump, how you come to the fence. The turns that you make, how close you want your horse to the fence before he actually jumps. You have to look ahead. So you, as you approach the jumps, you look through it to the other side and then you immediately look to the next jump. You're using a lot of your legs, moving them forward. And then with dressage, it's in an arena. Dressage, it's a lot of legs. The horse is yielding to your leg, he's yielding to your hands. It's almost like doing a ballet dance with your horse. You've got him circling and doing leg yields and doing a pattern. It's more technical. With hunter jumpers, the main thing is just to get over the jump. With the endurance racing, there is a lot of training. There's a lot of conditioning. You have to go out and ride that horse 15, 20 miles each week and get it into condition, keep it into condition to actually go to the race and participate in the 50 mile race. They have to be in really good shape. They have to pass a vet test. Nutrition is a big deal. And the main thing with that is it, all of this is a partnership. But you and your horse both have to be in physical condition to go out there in the heat, in the cold, and run constantly for, for 50, 50 to 25 miles. There are breaks in between there where they check and make sure they're fit to continue. But the main thing in that would be just like if you were a jogger, if you were competing in runs and marathons, all the, the exercises and what they do to get in shape for those rides, basically you and your horse have to do that together to compete in the endurance. There are over 350 breeds of horses around the world. One of the most famous breeds of horses is the Arabian horse. They are most easily identified by their dish-shaped faces and athletic builds. They have great endurance, but are also very hot-tempered and stubborn. Although they can be hard to train, they are hard-working horses that strive to please their riders. The average horse stands at about 4.7 to 6 feet tall and can weigh anywhere between 800 and 2200 pounds. If horse's ears are pointing forward, it means that they are paying attention and happy. If they are pointed backwards, it can mean that they are angry, irritated, or in pain. Horses breathe through their noses and also use them to sense predators. The average horse's lifespan is 25 to 30 years. Horses are an important aspect of Kentucky and will likely continue to be relevant for a long period of time.